Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. I'm back to do another weekly update. It's been another good reading week for me, so I'm very excited for the books that I have to talk about in this video. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. Actually, that's a lie. I'm not going to just jump right in. One thing I want to mention, I'm very excited because I've been like making crazy good progress on my physical TBR. And one, I kind of made a video talking about it on Book Riot. So I'm going to link to that up in the cards just in case any of you are interested in hearing me kind of talk about the state of my physical TBR. And you might not be subscribed to Book Riot and stuff like that, so you might not have seen it. So I will link to that up in the cards. The other thing that I was thinking about doing is like doing sort of like an unread bookshelf tour almost and talking about the books that I've left on my physical TBR. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know down in the comments below because I'm contemplating it and I mean I might just do it anyways whether you say you want it or not because <laughs> that's just how I roll but I thought I would just throw it out there just to like gauge general interest or not in something like that. All right now on to the books. <laughs> All right, first up, I'm going to just talk about the book that I already put a individual review of up, and that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to the Hunger Games series. I don't think I need to talk about this book very much because um, I just saw a news article that said it sold like 500,000 copies. <laughs> That's like physical ebook and audiobook combined. But yeah, if it seems like everyone is reading and talking about this book, it's because, you know, they kind of are. But yes, I made a whole video talking about this separately because one, I knew there was going to be interest and two, I just had things I wanted to talk about. So I'm just going to link to that up in the cards. But there's also a pretty good chance that if you're watching this video, you've already seen that one because wow, that video is doing numbers for me <laughs> in like the week. There's like a fun thing on YouTube analytics where you can kind of compare how a video is doing compared to like typical views in the same like time period and it is like double what I usually do in a week so that's wild. But yeah I have thoughts. They're complicated and I go into it. It's completely spoiler free so you don't have to worry about anything like that. And if you want a short answer of like whether or not you should pick up this book, I can't really tell you that. It really depends on what you're looking for in a Hunger Games prequel. But I think I do a pretty good job not to pat myself on the back too hard to kind of break down the pros and cons of this book. And so you can kind of decide whether or not this is worth picking up for you or whether it's like better to get from the library or whatnot. This past weekend I also finished Everyone Knows You Go Home by Natalia Sylvester and this book was so good. I want to do an individual review of this one because I have good feelings that this will end up on my favorite books of 2020 list. This is like a partially magical realism type of book but it's really not like fully magical or fully magical realism I should say. You're mainly following this woman named Isabel and this family that she has married into and the first chapter of the book takes place on Isabel's wedding day when she is meeting her father-in-law Omar for the very first time but she is meeting him as a ghost. So Isabel and Martin her now husband have gotten married on El Dio de los Muertos. And so one of the things about that day is that the ghosts from a family's past might show up if they have, you know, kind of, the way they talk about it in here is like as if they have unresolved business or people they need to like talk to and stuff like that. Um, and so Omar visits Isabel and Martin like while they're in a car after their wedding and Isabel has never met him before because Omar left the family when Martin was young. And so this story follows Isabel and Martin and Martin's family as they like continue on with their lives from this point forward. Um, you learn about like Isabel's relationship to this family. They've known each other for a very long time and you learn about her relationship with Martin but you also are learning like all of this family history as well. So it goes across a couple of years and so like every year on their wedding anniversary slash El Dia de los Muertos Omar shows up basically to talk to Isabel. Interspersed in here there are also chapters about Omar and Elda's immigration to the United States and so you kind of go back and forth in time between the 1980s when they immigrated and sort of their life when they first came to America and then like modern day. Yeah this book is really really beautiful and I, again I want to do a whole individual review on this book but if you are someone who enjoys family stories, um, if you enjoy stories about immigration, if you enjoy really heartfelt stories, I highly recommend this book. Um, there are a couple of things in here that like it's not that they didn't work but like it just felt like excess information almost but 
again, I'm going to do a whole review on this book so I can talk about it further. But overall, I gave it four out of five stars. Really, really enjoy it and highly recommend it. All right, next up, I read A Girl Returned by Donatella di Pietrantonio probably ruined that. Uh, this was originally written in Italian and then translated from Italian into English by Anne Goldstein. And Anne Goldstein is also the translator of the Elena Ferrante books. So this is a book that Europa actually sent to me, which thank you for that. And it was really good. I say that with the question mark at the end of my sentence, which I will get into. Um, I will say that if you are someone who has read the Elena Ferrante books and really enjoy them and are like anxiously anticipating more Elena Ferrante, I think that this book will scratch a similar itch for you. Um, it's significantly shorter and it is obviously not a series but I think that it has very similar vibes and situations. In this story you are following this unnamed 13 year old girl who suddenly finds out that her parents are not actually her parents and she gets sent back to her birth family's home. However her I guess adopted parents, they're her aunt and uncle technically like biologically were significantly more well off than her birth parents were. Her birth family also includes like three brothers and another sister I believe or the four brothers and another sister. It's a larger family all of whom have no idea who this girl is and they are suddenly shocked as well to find out that this girl exists and that she's going to be moving in with them but they are also like really poor and so this book basically just explores this like approximately like two year period almost a year and a half two years where this girl lives with this family and sort of the effects of that um and one of the sort of mysteries I suppose around this story is why she was sent back in the first place it's not clear at the beginning of the book why her adoptive mm. parents let her leave or not let her leave but sent her back to her birth family and so this story is partially about this sort of dissidence of her life and her learning just like this completely different way of living and then also about her trying to figure out like what is going on with her parents um her adoptive parents I should say so yeah like I said this has like very strong Elena Ferrante vibes I haven't read like the whole series but I read half of the first book years ago I like checked it out from the library and I couldn't finish it in time for when it was due um so I never finished it and I never went back to it but this definitely has similar vibes a lot of the time is spent exploring this relationship between this unnamed narrator and her sister so there's a lot of these sort of like push and pulls in their relationship that I think are very similar to the push and pulls of the friendship in the Ferrante books. Um, again, the translator is the same, so it has very similar rhythms and styles to the way that it's written. I will say that I had a harder time kind of figuring out how I felt about this book because there is like this detached nature to the story that's being told here. But I think that like overall, it really won me over. There is some like really simple writing here, but it's still really beautiful, which is something that's kind of hard to see or find. And yeah, I feel like if you've read Europa books before, you kind of have a feel for the types of things that it explores. So this is very much like a literary, literary fiction book, but it's a book that I enjoy nonetheless. And I would recommend if you're a fan of these types of things. So yeah, I think I gave it a four out of five stars or maybe a three and a half out of five stars. I don't remember exactly. But overall, I enjoyed my experience reading this and this is also again a really short book so it's kind of like a nice book to read outside on a summer day which is basically what I did. <laughs> All right and then finally I read Motor Crush Volume 1 which was created by Brandon Fletcher, Cameron Stewart, and Babs Tarr and if those names sound familiar to you this is the team that was behind the Batgirl in Burnside I believe is what it's called series. It was like the Batgirl reboot that came out three four years ago at this point. Um, It had like that super viral image of like Batgirl in like a mirror t taking a selfie. But yeah I read that series. Um, I think Brendan Fletcher was also involved in the Gotham Academy comics and that was also something that I enjoyed back then. And so I was literally just at a comic book store and I saw this and I just like pulled it out and I saw the names and I was like okay yeah I'm in. <laughs> So this is kind of like a sci-fi sort of comic, but not really. Um, you're following this character named Domino Swift, who you see here on the front. She is a motorbike racer and she in the daytime races on like a professional level, but at night she races at as part of like a biker gang kind of like she's not in a gang, but she races against gangs and it's to acquire this thing called Crush, which sounds like a drug. Um, it's drawn as like this liquid and it's explained in here that like if anyone ingests too much of it they basically die so you know a drug. And so this first volume has the first 
five issues, I believe, of this comic book series. And it's just like, you know, the introduction to the series. You find out a little bit about Domino Swift and her family. Um, you find out that she doesn't necessarily come from here. Is she an alien? Maybe? And she gets involved in sort of like betting on herself for reasons. <laughs> It's hard to like talk about it because this feels like just like a chapter one sort of situation, this entire volume. But I also don't want to give away too much of what happens in here if you want to read it yourself. But yes, overall, I really enjoyed this a lot. I definitely want to buy volume two. I think there's three volumes in total. If you can't tell, Domino Swift is a woman of color. She's also queer. So if those are things that you're interested in, you can pick up this. I love the art in here. It has like a very street art style, which is makes sense. Like if you're thinking about this comic, but it's extreme colorful which is very much Babs Tar style but there are also like parts of it that feel like very sketchy at the same time but yeah it's very like pink and neon and things along those lines so I'm a fan of Babs Tar. I like her art style a lot but like I said again this is just volume one so it's just the beginning of the story but I definitely want to pick up more of this comic. So that is everything I've read so far this week. I'm currently reading Woven in Moonlight which is a young adult fantasy book that came out earlier this year. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only like four chapters in though so you can find out next week how I felt about it. But yeah, that's everything I have. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about here this week or if you have questions on any of them or if you want to leave a comment letting me know what you've been reading recently. Always enjoy hearing about that. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.